What's up everyone? Big Bad Brad and the family here in Fort Madison, Iowa. We took the five hour trip of the back roads and we're here and we're going to take a look around and get to know Schaefer Pens just a little bit better. So let's head inside so we can explore the Schaefer Pen Museum. And if you want to visit the Schaefer Pen Museum for yourself, it's located on 627 Avenue G in Fort Madison, Iowa. Here you go, sir. Thank you, dear. Oh, Shit right here, hon. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Janesville. Yes. That looks nice in here. Alright, we're inside the Schaefer Museum now. You first walk in here on your left. You got a lovely gift shop, you can get your postcards, and a nice display, some different models that you can pick up, your hats and shirts, umbrellas, you know I'm going to have to pick up at least a shirt, you guys know I like shirts, koozies, travel mugs, there's a nice book, 100 Years of Schaefer, Take a little peek in that. Death sets, all your different Schaefer models. Your no nonsense. Oh, there's a Schaefer calendar pen. I didn't know they did have a calendar pen. Some great imagery. So I might have to check into that here. Some more Schaefers. So, there's three rooms. You have your main room here. Another room here. And it all goes in chronological order from the original board meetings and stuff. And it goes over here to the early hard rubber. Your ripple, cherry celluloid, lots of displays, clocks, and all throughout the whole museum, there's great art pieces. It just shows you all the family members. And as you guys know, this is located in Fort Madison, Iowa. And right here in this picture is where the original Schaefer store was. I don't know if you can see that. And it really nice. There's a Schaefer clock. <laughs> and you go over here, and it this is wasp pens and this was more of a drugstore brand made by the Schaefer company and all sorts of unique all sorts of unique rod stock that they only make with this model of pen <laughs> Craig Schaefer We come into another room loaded with Schaefer's. It, the scale from the gold room. This is what they would measure all the gold with, what they would need to use for nibs and so forth. Here's a chronological order of death sets. Some marvelous looking pieces. You go up here. 
And there's some store displays for different occasions that you would buy Schaefer pens for. Yeah, graduate, oh, sorry, we have graduation, lady getting it for her husband, oh, and then we have for weddings, and a young couple. Up here we have a giant PFM nib. That is excellent. And here we have a death set, the lamp. There's another one. Schaefer calligraphy set. Store display. We move down here. And it gets into the Schaefer flat tops in different styles. These are from the 1920s. I really like these. And here is some celluloid. Instead of the rods, at one point they tried to make sheets of this and they would roll them out. But people didn't like the seam in the pen. And here we go into the Schaefer balance. And gray pearl, jet black, blue, ebonized pearl and black. And here's some of that rod here. Marine green, jade green, rose glow. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Let's move over here for above shot. And we have marine green up above. Carmine, golden brown, gray pearl and red vein. And above that, as you can see, there's, it shows you the dates which they did each one of these runs. Mm -hmm. And here's the sales conference, all the men that would come together and learn about the products and how to promote them. I'm going to have to ask him again in a little bit what this bad boy is called. Right over here on this wall is all Schaefer's wartime effort and stuff they did. As you can see, Schaefer got the Army E Navy Award also, like Parker Penn. They're there and doing some speeches. down here in this case below a Schaefer with a cutaway so you can see how it works this is the Schaefer tuck away and this is the United Nations Charter in San Francisco and there's the death set that was used and here we have different stuff that they would made during the war time. Auto tone head during World War II. Schaefer was involved in the war effort and manufactured detonator fuses, auto tune heads, and other non pen items that were essential for the war. And here's a little piece of ephemera the Voyager. And they would send this to soldiers and add some ink, paper, and stuff like that. So the soldiers could write home. And this is a, a machine here that you would turn on and you could look at pens and stuff in very fine detail as you can see right now there's a pin on there and you can see the pin how much larger it is on the screen then we go into the the Schaefer PFM the pen for men and I just love how they have all these different displays at the museum here that kind of capture the period when these pens were made all the different ephemera 
that was used. There's a snorkel pen and pencil. And here shows you all the different parts of the Schaefer that would be used from the, the plunger, gaskets, barrels, nibs, clips, and so forth. A nice mat that would be out at you go to the Schaefer dealer and they would lay the pens out on us so they don't have to set them on the glass and then damage the pens or scratch them. And here, as you can see, are the Schaefer snorkels. And I really like that print block right there. Some different awards. And then we have the Schaefer Lady script shirts, a favorite pattern of mine. I actually picked out a, a few of these while I was in town today. And after I share the museum video, I'm definitely gonna be showing you some of the Schaefer's I found while hunting for pens in Fort Madison. Cause you guys know, I, if I came here, I had to look for some Schaefer's. More ephemera, stuff from different magazines. And here's the Balance 2, which came out later. Some rod stock for it. And if you guys are Schaefer collectors, make sure to let me know what's your favorite model of Schaefer. Do you prefer a fountain pen, ballpoint, mechanical pencil? Do you like modern or vintage? I'm definitely a fan of the vintage. All right. You guys got to see this room as a whole. I know there's another room. It just goes on and on. But this room is just excellent. It's a mock setup of the Schaefer, of what it would be like working on the floor at the Schaefer plant. All the machines that you would use, different pens and stuff like that. So they would use these for dipping the pens in different materials. Yeah, pen testing machine, drying racks. Let me zoom in on that pen testing machine because that's just excellent. I'd like to have one of those. I think I'd have a lot of fun with it. And here's where the employee would be working. It has a woman's Schaefer smock there. And all the stuff labeled. Um, I'm going to be taking a look a little closer. Because right now I just had to get this video shot. And I have to learn a little bit more while I'm here. Because I'd like to know a lot more about the Schaefer company. But here you can see it says press the green button to activate. So we're going to have to press the green button to see how some of these machines run. Here we have a storage system all set up showing you different how they would store stuff. This is the Schaefer Snorkel and the PFM. They tell you the models on each little cards and stuff. These are all the parts that go into that pen. These are pretty. Me and mom like those a lot. We had a couple of them. Schaefer script shirt lady pens. That's cool. To the right of the MGP is a multi board cabinet used in the Schaefer repair department. These are pretty. The this is the, the balance too. The original balance is right there. And then it comes over here to this balance. I like that color a lot. <coughs> me too. Up here are some trophies from some of the different sports and stuff like that that the Schaefer Company had teams in. So they had baseball, bowling, and so forth. Schaefer printed 
And all the cases are safer, all well lit, well cleaned for your viewing pleasure. Look at all those beautiful death sets. Let's move in close and take a better look. We have some with Brazilian agate. Ooh, petrified wood bases. The Gibson brass. Actually, we took a picture of the Gibson Brass one at the hotel we were staying at. Some wood bases, marble, some more modern, black glass, plastic. I just got that one. And that's the model 501, and I did not know that. Some ceramic materials. Clamshells. Calendar dust set. It seems like a lot of the dust sets just have model numbers and not names for the ones. Ooh, I like that one, model 1012 with the ducks on it. That's pretty epic. Prototype. Mother of Pearl. Alright guys, let's head into the main room now. And boom. Here we have the main room. Lily's hanging out with some of the workers here, keeping them company. Yeah, look at that. That's a sweet coat there. It's an employee coat and it's at the Schaefer plant on the back of it. And I got some shots of the Schaefer plant earlier. Some different pictures that were commissioned by the Schaefer Company by uh, various artists. Yeah, some from Cole Phillips, Anderson Lewis, and this one looks like Frederick Meisen. Um, my name is Jan Garza, and I've lived in Fort Madison my entire life. I worked at Schaefer's from 1972, started out as a uh, clerk in the credit department and stayed for 15 years and when I retired from there as credit manager I loved working there loved the people had no complaints whatsoever I birthed my last child and decided I wanted to be a home mom for a while so that's the only reason I left I still love that place so I love the opportunity to be here amongst all the the history and the pens and as I told Brad, I don't know a lot about the manufacturing side, having been in the office, but uh, so I'm learning right along with everybody else, and it, it's fascinating. They, the Schaefer pen history is just wonderful. <clears throat> um, as I said, I've lived here my entire life. I am currently a minister in a nearby town, so that allows me the freedom to set my own schedule so I can be here as much as I want to, uh, to help with tours or different things. And I love meeting people. We have a boat that stops uh, 13 times, I think, last summer. And uh, met people from all over the United States and other countries. And just like Lily and Nolly here today, really enjoyed the visit. I think uh, she taught me more than I taught her. <laughs> so we had a good time, so. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. Make sure to come down and see Jan. She's a wonderful lady and she'd be happy to talk about Schaefer with you. Thank you. And here is a desk that was inside the original plant set up. More modern Schaefer's. 
We have the Prelude. Legacy. Oh, I have seen that picture before. Yep, that's the, the nice. Norman. Thank you. And here I have the Javelin. I'm not real familiar with that model, but I really like the colors a lot. Hey, come here. A Geo. The fashion series. We just got some of those next door. Look at that. Thank you. And here's the Connoisseur collection. Here we get into the, the Schaefer Targa. And you'll see when I go to do the, the haul video, we picked up a few Targas on this trip. And that's some nice filigree. Actually, we got that filigree right there. And that's the there we made this Targa from 76 to 98. Amara, this is those are those pens that they were shown in the other room with the wire rack that they did. Yes, that's cool. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not cool, and you're not drawing, what's your next step? Well, pets. Here we have some of the limited edition and special occasion Schaefer pens. The classic pen limited editions and up here are some of the awards that the museum has won from pen world magazine you guys know i i subscribe to pen world great magazine you have a nice wall of ephemera and different ads that they would run in magazines like nat geo or the saturday evening post on um, these are different schaefer plants from around the world here we have an England plant, Australia, Canada, there's the one in Fort Madison, we got, we got some shots of that, another Canada plant, and here we have the Netherlands, and down below that we have some more modern Schaefers and their collaboration that they did with Ferrari. The Ferrari 100 and the Ferrari VFM. Nice Schaefer timepiece. And you go to here, we have the Schaefer Award, Circle Grip, Delta Grip, Lay Sport. Remember, I just got some of those in an earlier video in my Schaefer haul. Make sure to check that out. I'll leave a link at the end. The EVC, which I really like that model. Then we go over here to the Schaefer Balance. Not the not the Balance. Hold on. Uh, why, Schaefer No Nonsense. There we go. I keep doing that today for some reason. And we got a, a bunch of Schaefer No Nonsense today. Uh, I'll be sharing. And this, this here is a collection that's on loan from John Hansman and has all the different models laid out with the little descriptions and it's actually in original display and this in my opinion is my favorite display case here and they'd have the inks set up here so they could pull the pens out and dip them and test them out And here in this case is a different print box that they would use for advertisements and stuff like that. And you guys know I like print blocks. I have a, a few Parker ones myself. And up above it shows some of the adhesives that were used in various stages of pen manufacturing. I guess I'm getting an exclusive look 
of the downstairs at the Schaefer Museum. Not everyone gets to see this. So you guys consider yourself lucky that they're, you're gonna get a peek. I'm sure they would not be oh, proud of it. Holy they're, moly. These are all the drawings, files, movies. See that guys? That is a lot of shade for history. You could probably be down here for a week and not see everything. That's wild. And you have it all alph like all alphabetized through history or actually not. It was we were we thought originally that these would have to be returned across because they wanted a lot of the things back. But in the end they decided that we could, really? that the museum could have them. That's awesome. So you guys get to rotate some of the stuff up in the museum then, they too. They can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I take a little gander? Sure. Okay. Looks like they're setting up a display or a previous display here. Different oil cans, lots of paperwork. These are probably all original cabinets then, too, huh? That were in the plant? That's fine. Wood ones, but all the rest of them were in the were in the plant. Yeah. Nice. Unfortunately, they all had to be unpacked and put in these boxes, so they lost a little bit of their nostalgia. Of it. Yeah, I'm go back and yeah, I said okay. Oh. And they have some displays here. Holy mo! Ephemera. How many people are on the board for this? I'm not sure. There's probably at least five or six, but I, that's I don't I haven't really been in contact for quite a while. Right. I say yeah, you need a nice team to handle all this. Some posters. Yeah, originally it was all. The tubs were all categorized and, and uh, cataloged. I think that's lost a little of its integrity. Looks like tool parts. Pretty amazing, huh, guys? What's in this big book? Can I open this? Uh, be careful. All right, would you, really you, do you mind showing me? Those are old ledgers, but they're a little bit on the moldy side. So oh, and then it's they're getting wore out. You don't want to mess the paper. It's all, it's all hand. That's some big ledger book. Yeah. See, that's all mold. And I'm guessing these are pens. Oh, more ephemera. This is Bernie McCullen here. He, he was kind enough to come in and give a helping hand today. And he worked at the Schaefer plant for how long? 41 years. 41 years. 41. So he knows the company inside and out. You probably got to keep it just the right temperature down in here, otherwise the paper gets well, messed to, up, huh? Try to keep all the, the humidity down. These are all still in here. These are all films, ads. Do you guys have it, uh, the stuff to play them? Oh yeah, right here. There's the real, the real right there. We do. It's it's been it was a project to actually have these converted digi digitally. Oh, that'd be pretty excellent. That's pretty expensive. This looks like this is the prototypes and stuff here, huh? These came out of the the um, Schaefer offices when we when that was closed a couple years ago in town. I see they have all little numbers on them and stuff like mm -hmm. that. That's the swim target. Come down here and assemble them and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know what they've been doing with them. But. More pens. Holy moly. Well guys, what do you think? So much shade for history. If I lived closer here, I think I'd be hanging out here quite a bit.
papers and these are we've got them all scheduled here for example these would be january 1950 and here's the modern mount pleasant plant 1950 I actually just ordered one of my first ones off eBay for of these so I could read more about the company. Okay. I love okay. the employee books like these. Parker also did some books in-house ones, Parker Times and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Schaefer Review. Mm -hmm. And so we've got these all so that somebody could take a look. I have, know, and at the back, very often, they will list, um, okay, happy birthday to these people in the different departments, or they will list Fort Madison has a world championship rodeo every year in September. Really? And uh, Schaefer always took part in the um, parade and... They have a park here for Schaefer employees. There is and some the ink bottles. Yeah, we have over 10,000 lights. Actually, we have over 17,000 lights. Oh, that one's closed up. Uh, Minnesota. I was going to show them that Minnesota. sterling yeah, pen. And you guys got to see this beautiful set. She has been in the middle of cleaning. Still needs a little cleaning because I didn't mm -hmm. use any. Look at that bad boy. Sterling silver base, sterling silver. It's a Targa, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And some inkwells. Mm, magnifique. Original price. Manufacturer, $750 for it. I imagine what that's worth now. Uh, it looks like it's a small. See, I'll probably fit. That Schaefer hat. And then I gave you some cards. Yes, and then this one. All right. Oh. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank you for coming down and letting us show off our wonderful day. Well, we'll be doing it again, I'm sure, soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. All right, guys, we're leaving the Schaefer Pen Museum. We had a wonderful time. There's some great people running the place. Give a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, and subscribe for more Pen Ventures with AB Rustic Relics. See you next time. Ciao, man. You want to push that green button? Sure. Welcome to the Schaefer Pen Museum's factory. You are looking at items and machines that were used at various times in the manufacturing process in the original Schaefer Pen Company. On the wall to your left, Note the numerous wire screens used in the lacquer process. Four of the finished lacquer pens are matched with their appropriate design screens. Can you see the screen design in the finished pen design? Try to spot some of these same screen designs on several of the finished pens in subsequent showcases. The large framed brass sheet of Schaefer Circle Grip pen clip blanks dates to circa 2005. Continuing along the left wall, you will see a shelf display of steel dies used to produce various Schaefer nibs and clips. Just below these steel dies is a table with the nib welder. The first process required after forming the metal stamping into a nib is to weld a hard, corrosion-resistant alloy ball onto the point. Sometimes called an iridium alloy, the later balls produced by Schaefer contain no iridium, but rather other metals like ruthenium, tungsten, nickel, molybdenum, and cobalt. The resistance welders used by Schaefer were antique models. Tipping material balls that were produced by Schaefer were loaded into a small hopper and then automatically fed onto the copper anvil every time a nib point was moved into position. When the point was in proper position, a switch triggered the current flow. The resistance between the ball and the nib created enough heat to melt the two together, forming a perfect joint. Press the black color button now to see the nib welder in action.
Hanging in the upper left hand corner is a plating rack designed to dip multiple pen caps and barrels into a cleaning plating solution. They were then hung to dry. Along the wall in front of you is a large wood crate that was used to safely ship Schaefer displays to trade shows all around the country. On top of this wood shipping crate is a large machine with paper loops written on white paper. This is an Anja Wright testing machine. The Schaefer Lab used this machine and others like it for many years to test and audit marker and rollerball refills. Similar machines were used to test ballpoint refills as well. Actual handwriting was just not practical, especially for a fine-tipped ballpoint refill capable of writing over 27,000 feet before it expires. Performance indicators such as total writing length is easily determined by noting the number of measured loops made on the counter before the refill expires. Ink laydown rates are also calculated simply by making precise weight measurements of the refills before and after a measured length of writing. Point defects and discrepancies such as damaged ball retaining lips, excess accumulation of ink on the point, starved or directional writing were easily apparent by aberrations in the pattern of the loops on paper. Although this brand of machine was ultimately replaced by a more universally recognized piece of equipment, it provides very unique insight into the refill performance <coughs> and is still occasionally used by the Schaefer Lab. Press the orange button now to see the Anja in action. Above the Anja Wright testing machine are several gauges used in factory production to measure depth in prelude barrels and agio caps. The nib punch press is the machine near the center Hi. of the back wall. Schaefer had many punch presses used to produce various parts for its products. Those in the pinpoint area were used to cut, bend, and form the metal into the various shapes of nibs required for Schaefer's fountain pen writing units. Nibs of several gold alloys, as well as stainless steel, were produced. Although in later years the stainless steel nibs were produced fully automatically in progressive dies, the gold nibs were stamped and formed in single station dies producing one operation at a time. Skilled tool makers and operators checked that every detail of the nib was correct to ensure proper function at assembly. Several dimensions for the inlaid nibs were produced to tolerances within plus or minus two ten thousandth of an inch to be sure they would function properly when loaded into the injection mold where they were produced. These were very precision operations performed by skilled craftsmen. You can see the press running in both single cycle and automatic mode. Press the yellow button now to see the nib punch press in action. Want to press the yellow? To the right of the TV screen is a shelf used in a Schaefer laboratory. Many other dies and tools are on display here. In the far right corner is a tall blue machine called a sand abrader. Sand was poured into the top of this machine. Writing instruments were placed in the box below. The constant falling sand provided technicians a measurable process to test the abrasive resistance of those same writing instrument finishes. 
The very large machine along the wall to your extreme right is a machine ground point, or MGP, a mechanical alternative to hand fountain pen point grinding. These cast iron MGPs were built entirely by Schaefer Tulin die makers. They operated reliably for well over half a century. The MGPs were used at least twice in the point making process to properly shape and polish the tipping material. The machines shaped the extremely hard tipping material from the beginning spherical shape to the signature baby bottom shape of a proper fountain pen nib. Rubber bonded abrasive cylinders were used to provide the basic shape of the point. Additional operations using buffing discs provided the final polish for smooth fluid writing. This machine executed a series of complex motions to accomplish these tasks. Our machine is fitted with buffing cylinders and buffing rouge, note the samples on the machine, was applied to the wheel periodically to provide the mild abrasive necessary for a smooth polish. When you watch in an operation, you will see that the spindle starts first. The speed of the spindle could be increased or decreased as required for the operation selected and for the point grade being processed. Next, the machine carriage could traverse left and right to continually bring fresh rouge to the part. Finally, a forward and back rocking motion ensured that the entire writing surface was polished. Press the pink button now to see the MGP actions in the order just described.